Hi, I'm Ari Polykronopoulos, Head of Product Management and ESG at Research Affiliates. And with me is Vitaly Klesnik, Director of Research for Research Affiliates Global Advisors in Europe. Hi, Vitaly. Hi, Ari. Today we'll be examining Vitaly's forthcoming research in the Journal of Portfolio Management. Do corporate emissions data enable investors to mitigate climate change? Now, in your paper, Vitaly, you examine emissions data for both uh, historical and forward-looking estimates. Uh, can you describe the, his, the landscape for historical data and some of the pros and cons associated with that? Yes, uh, so the uh, data on carbon emissions is, is extremely important for investors to make um, their investment decisions and, and uh, investors are increasingly using the data. Um, now, um, uh, there are two types of data that investors use today. Um, one is on the historical and current emissions, basically what it tells or it's supposed to tell us uh, what type, uh, how much emissions uh, companies have done already. Uh, and then the forward-looking uh, data is supposed to tell us uh, who will be polluting more in the future and who will be polluting less in the future. Uh, and this data is extremely important for uh, both uh, investors to understand um, how much risks they're facing with, uh, with different emissions of different companies, how much stranded assets these companies may potentially have uh, if we're moving away from uh, and when we're moving away from uh, polluting technologies, uh, and uh, where are the investment opportunities. And, and so as we're looking at the historical data uh, or historical emissions, uh, the data is, uh, again, there are two categories or two groups within it. Um, one is uh, reported data uh, and another is estimated data. Um, so uh, basically about uh, today, we have a, a situation where companies can emit but don't have to report. Uh, and as a result, uh, about half of companies by market capitalization choose not to report. Uh, out, of, out of those, so uh, basically uh, this uh, half report, uh, the remainder half uh, are estimated by data providers. Um, now, estimated data by definition is going to be worse than what companies can provide because outsiders don't have uh, nearly as much visibility into company processes. But even the reported data, because uh, it's not mandatory, uh, there is no auditing, suffers from many biases. So for example, companies potentially with uh, bad emissions may choose not to report. So that can, can result in a bias. Uh, companies, uh, emissions are not verified. So companies may underreport, nobody will check. Um, companies may choose uh, to tweak uh, the amounts uh, that they're reporting uh, and or choose the uh, tweak the methodology they're using to estimating it because uh, again it's not mandatory in many jurisdictions uh, and because of that uh, there is no single standard that they have to choose so all of that uh, make even the reported data uh, substandard or um, it, it, this data uh, may have a few biases. Now, having said that, today the reported data is probably the uh, most clean and reliable data that we have. Great. So you mentioned estimated data. Can you talk about of the uh, data providers you, you reviewed? How reliable are their estimates uh, when they use models to estimate emissions data? Yeah, so that, that was um, a big part of uh, this research project to exactly uh, look at uh, the estimated data and, uh, and check how good these data are. Uh, because the current uh, status quo uh, is people, investors assume that these estimates are as good as the reported data. Um, and so uh, what we did, uh, we, we ran a couple of tests. Uh, one, we look at the consistency of the data uh, and we found that uh, these data are about, share about 0 0.85 correlation between each other. So we looked at different data providers uh, and ran their cross correlation. Uh, now, you may think that this is a high number and indeed these numbers are quite, uh, 
higher than what you could see in many other areas of ESG, where some ESG measures could be completely uncorrelated between different data providers. Uh, but uh, take, putting it in perspective, if your goal is to uh, find out the 5% worst emitters, uh, these uh, two data providers would only agree on half of the list. So that, that's pretty big dispersion uh, in the estimates and the quality of estimates. Uh, and then uh, next, a question uh, that we wanted to test. So first, it's not very consistent and, and that undermines investor actions. Uh, second issue with the data, uh, second question in the research project that we wanted to ask uh, is how good uh, is, are the reported, uh, are the estimated data as a substitute for the reported data? Uh, and to answer that question, uh, we ran uh, this experiment. Uh, we, we said, why don't we introduce an estimation model of our own where we can uh, completely uh, get uh, and understand what percentage of, of the variation in emissions uh, we capture with this model. So we did that. What we found, by the way, is that much of the emissions are captured by just controlling size of the company and sector information. And then what we ne did next is we picked a subset of companies that choose not to report and the data providers and our model uh, gave estimates. And, and then these companies later started reporting. And, and we uh, looked for how, uh, how better or worse does our model uh, do versus the um, estimates that we get from data providers. And so what we found was that uh, basically the models that we came up with are not, are not uh, worse uh, than the data that we get from data provider. And so th then what we did was we said, so how good is our model, which is actually slightly better than what we get from data providers, well, it, it was about two and a half times worse than the reported data in identifying the worst emitters. Um, so the bottom line is that the data that we're getting from the data providers uh, is about two and a half times worse than the reported data. That's a pretty significant, in identifying the worst emitters. That a pretty significant difference. And that speaks to the issue uh, that we shouldn't take this status quo as given. Um, the, estimated data is materially worse than the reporting, uh, than the reported data, and we should um, incentivize uh, companies to start reporting. So switching gears to forward-looking estimates, uh, typically uh, these data providers you look at, in addition to providing historical emissions data, uh, they provide usually a carbon score or carbon rating, which looks at uh, company emission targets, for example. Um, how reliable was the forward-looking data you examined in actually predicting future emissions? Yeah, that, that, that's uh, another very intriguing question. We coming to the um, into the study, uh, we wanted to uh, evaluate how good is this forward-looking data is actually in predicting the future emissions. Now. Of course, um, predicting emissions is actually not difficult. The, the emissions are very pre, um, persistent. So knowing the current emissions, you pretty much know who's going to be uh, emitting in, in the next year and the year afterwards. Uh, but um, what we would expect from this forward-looking data is not to tell us that company A has already uh, been emitting and therefore it's going to be emitting going forward. We'd want to see changes in the emissions. And so we wanted to see uh, if the data uh, that this scores, this forward-looking scores are actually predictive of the future changes in emissions. Now, when we uh, ran that predictive regression, uh, basically we had data from several data providers and, and we asked, and we ran the regression where uh, we wanted to predict the future changes in emissions. Our outcome was very much to our shock uh, no predictability. We got R squared zero and statistical insignificance for all coefficients for all the data providers that we examined. That was shocking. We were expecting to find some, at least some predictability, and we found none. Uh, and uh, so what that means uh, is that many um, uh, 
many investors are relying on data that actually doesn't uh, contain any useful information. Uh, a lot of what, what it actually contains uh, are the cheap talk provided by the companies and uh, data providers just have an aggregated mechanism of assembling that, oh, a company just bothered to, to, to reply and say that we have created a committee on reducing emission, we have selected this target by 2060, but we don't do anything. There's nothing in this estimates about the actions. So I think that that, so first investors should probably stop using the data before they get a clear evidence, the data that some other types of data that they're getting is actually predictive. And uh, I think that uh, investors should, uh, or what, what can that type of data be? Well, I think looking, instead of looking at the cheap talk and signaling uh, that companies are do, I think it's more important to look at the actions. So maybe look at the investments uh, that company do and investments potentially into the reducing emissions. So that would be uh, a way to come up with these forward-looking estimates that would actually be predictive. Now, in the UK, they've already mandated uh, emissions disclosures for large public companies along the TCFD guidelines. Uh, in the United States, the SEC has recently proposed similar requirements. Uh, given your research, uh, how effective would mandating uh, emissions uh, disclosures be uh, for the emissions data? Well, it, it would, of course, be effective in uh, closing the gap between estimated and reported data. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we've done this research a, a couple of years back. The uh, publication cycle takes a few years to get it published from the initial kind of writing up. So we, we kind of hope so we, uh, throughout this period, we were presenting this, our findings and uh, advocating for, for the adoption uh, of just such uh, measures to start reporting. Uh, I think to a degree, it's, it's a little strange situation where mm, we, uh, we have companies that consume the public good of in public environment uh, and don't even have to report on their emissions. So I, I think reporting is at least the minimum uh, that the companies should be doing. Now, uh, having said, so I, I'm hugely uh, uh, welcome of these changes. And I think that uh, developed countries should also um, put pressure on other markets uh, that haven't done that uh, to, to start doing that, to start reporting, uh, to introduce mandatory reporting. Uh, and then, um, meanwhile, investors should probably be doing their part of the effort as well. Mm, so, uh, so for example, one of the things that we do at Research Affiliates is penalize the companies in certain of our products uh, that uh, do not report. Uh, we think that companies should be punished for not reporting and rewarding uh, for reporting. Great. Thanks, Vitaly. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our research, please visit us at Research Affiliates backslash insights or follow us on LinkedIn at Research Affiliates or on Twitter at RA underscore insights.